When I graduated from medical residency, what I had been taught about fibromyalgia can be summarized in one sentence. I was taught that fibromyalgia is a rare chronic pain syndrome of older women and doctors couldn't do much to help them feel better. But since then, I've been diagnosed with fibromyalgia and I've spent thousands of hours researching the syndrome and treating fibromyalgia patients. And I can tell you that most of what I learned in my medical training about fibromyalgia is not true. What I have since learned is that fibromyalgia is a chronic pain syndrome, but it's not rare. In an April 2014 edition of the Journal of the American Medical Association, a fibromyalgia review article found the incidence of fibromyalgia to be between 2% and 8% of the population. So in order to try to find out how many people in the U.S. have fibromyalgia, if we take a middle number, say 5%, that means 16 million people in the U.S. alone have fibromyalgia. And for me, that means it's not a rare syndrome. The journal article also stated that fibromyalgia can develop at any age, and I certainly have found that to be true in my practice. Boys and girls can develop fibromyalgia, and men can develop fibromyalgia, as well as women. And lastly, I've learned that fibromyalgia doctors can help fibromyalgia patients feel better. So I would like to share my story with you, and the story of some of my patients, and our experiences with this fascinating and challenging syndrome, fibromyalgia. The kids learned at a very young age. They were two, five, and seven when I crashed. And they learned what we could do, what we couldn't do. Um, I put all my energy that I could muster up into them. I would get up in the morning, get them off to school and come home and go back to bed for a couple of hours and then push through until bedtime. To, that, was, that was my life and we just did what we had to do. The biggest thing for me was that I wasn't gonna die because it, in the beginning it was, what do I have? It seemed like MS, we just didn't know. You know it's hard to remember things, you know, it must be, you know, I was just had a baby and was nursing and I kind of compare myself to other nurses who had just had babies and it was clearly affecting me, you know, my memory and concentration much more than, than them. It wasn't just nursing and, you know, the stress of being a new mom. I just felt like I was hardly competent anymore to, to be at work. I didn't have the energy or the mental ability anymore to do it. I remember telling family and friends that I, I thought I was getting Alzheimer's and it was really scaring me. And they laughed, but I was serious. I started to have weird pains when I was a little kid and, you know, told my parents I had stomach aches and pelvic pain. And they took me to doctors who couldn't figure out what was wrong with me and they decided it was growing pains and that was the end of that. So I wound up um, working as a wildlife biologist outdoors because I could move and I felt better. And the hotter it was outside, the better, and the more I moved, the better. Um, and unfortunately, at some point, like even that became very difficult because I had so many migraines and so much pain in my body. They eventually just said, well, you just are one of these people with pain. None of the other kids had a problem being on a sports team. Um, you know, all the other kids could run around all day at school. My kids couldn't. You know, my kids would come out of school exhausted. They had severe headaches nearly every day. Their legs were a real problem. They, they would either be crying before they went to sleep, that they couldn't get to sleep because their legs ached, or they'd wake up in, in the night and they'd be thrashing around, half asleep, crying, because their legs hurt so badly. I remember I'd wake up every morning with increased pain in all my joints and all my muscles, especially my legs and knees. That was probably the worst. It made it really hard to climb up the stairs. It's just really hard to move around and be active all the time like most kids are.
Personally, I slowly developed fibromyalgia symptoms over time uh, to the point in 2008 where I was diagnosed. And I found out three main things. Number one, there's no agreement on what causes fibromyalgia. Number two, there's no cure for fibromyalgia. And number three, the standard treatment is doctors starting prescribing fibromyalgia patients uh, pharmaceuticals to deal with their symptoms. And sadly, the pharmaceuticals only helped a small percentage of fibromyalgia patients feel better, and the beneficial effect of these drugs waned with time. So I was thrilled to find a book by Dr. R. Paul St. Amand and Claudia Marek called What Your Doctor May Not Tell You About Fibromyalgia. And, and this book detailed Dr. St. Amand's experience working with thousands of fibromyalgia patients and helping them feel better. He found that in fibromyalgia, we uh, have, our kidneys do not work well in processing phosphate and this excess buildup of phosphate in all of our cells causes all the problems of fibromyalgia. And by using the safe over-the-counter medication guaifenesin, the kidneys can excrete phosphate six times faster and slowly but surely we feel better. And this was incredibly exciting to me because here was a medication with no side effects that didn't merely mask the symptoms of fibromyalgia but reversed them over time. So if you compare the way you're feeling now, generally, to the way you felt six months a year ago? Much better. Okay. So less pain? Mm -hmm. um, Mentally more clear, less depressed. Oh, good, good. Okay. About a year. We've always thought maybe in the future we'd homeschool the kids, and a year ago it was like, never, no way. I was so overwhelmed with just the thought. But I feel good enough now that we decided we're going to homeschool, and I'm... Yeah. I don't have as much energy as normal people yet, but I'm, I have enough, so we're going to go for it. Uh, I, I think the first symptom that I remember that, like, wondering about was when I was probably in middle school, shampooing my hair. I, I had long, thick hair, and my arms would get so tired that I'd have to rest them down for a while and then continue. This would go on maybe for days or a couple weeks, and then it would go away for weeks or months and it would happen again and I figured it must happen to everybody but you know I'd mention it and people had you know never experienced it so I kind of planted the seed of you know is there something wrong with me. I also noticed that I had I just had no energy. Um, I used to be athletic I was on all the sports teams and did long bike rides for the MS Society of my family and in that year that I was 20, the second year of college, my dad wanted to come up and do a 30-mile bike ride, kind of a nostalgic thing. And, and I was telling him that I just, I just knew I couldn't. Um, even though a few years before I was doing so 80 miles in a day, 80 miles the next day, and no training was no big deal at all. And he didn't believe me because, you know, that just sounded ridiculous. And so I said I'd try, and Daniel was there, and Daniel literally was biking next to me with his hand on my back, helping me up hills. My legs were so fatigued, and um, I, I think my dad was shocked. I mean, at the time, we still didn't know that I had fibromyalgia, but about that time, my mom had read the, um, Dr. Sandeman's book, and she kind of diagnosed herself with it. I was still, you know, young and kind of a teenager, and, you know, not ready to believe that, that I, you know, had a, a disease. Dr. St. Amand taught me that 40% of fibromyalgia patients have an additional syndrome called carbohydrate intolerance. When these susceptible patients eat certain types and certain amounts of carbohydrates, their blood sugar rises as usual, but then it falls and keeps falling abnormally low, causing symptoms such as headaches, fatigue, anxiety, even muscle pain. And they, these symptoms add to the symptoms, the regular symptoms of fibromyalgia, making these patients extremely sick. And by learning how to diagnose carbohydrate intolerance, as well as fibromyalgia, I'm able to recommend the food plan that Dr. St. Amon developed to help keep the blood sugar steady. So it's vitally important for fibromyalgia patients with carbohydrate intolerance to both 
treat their fibromyalgia symptoms with guaifenesin and also go on the HG diet to keep their blood sugar steady and therefore reducing their symptoms, giving them the best chance at having a symptom-free life. The hips, you know, I'm always talking the hips thing. Yes. And it's, my hips have been really pretty brutal. But um, pretty much uh, as another thing that's always is the HG issue yes. with my not eating as I know I should and I, I know I feel better. And you have dramatic fluctuations in your blood sugar that cause dramatic symptoms. Yes. Right, and that cause the symptoms that overlap with the symptoms mm -hmm. of fibromyalgia. Yeah. When I started the protocol, yeah, um, I started the HG diet as well, and I did perfectly for at least a year. My story is everybody else's story. Go to the doctor, do a million studies, everything's normal. The doctor comes back and says, counseling, a vacation. But yeah, it was about four months after my father passed away. And I just, I, you know, was replaying everything in my head. I couldn't sleep. And it just, it was just down, down, down. Everybody kept telling me, you're depressed. I kept saying, I'm not depressed, I'm sick. I feel like I have a very good sense of life. I was not depressed. I did not feel like I was depressed. Rodney had seen, my husband had seen um, an article in the San Diego Union and it was it was just listed all my symptoms and they said this is what it's called and go to a rheumatologist so I cut it out of the paper and that's where we went and he examined me and did the 12 tender points and everything was normal as usual and so he said the good news is you have fibromyalgia, or you, you know, it's like you're not crazy, you have fibromyalgia. Bad news is we can't do anything for you. And so um, it just, we just decided to manage on our own. And um, we just would try this and try that. I was so excited to start the protocol, even though I was afraid of, you know, getting sick. In nine months, I knew that this was it. I'd finally really found my hope and I knew that even if I'd never got better than that right then, I would never stop taking guaifenesin. Never. I have been ill for a long time, for many years, and um, with what I eventually found out was ulcerative colitis and inflammatory bowel disease. And as part of that, I suffered a great many different symptoms, but a lot of those symptoms did not fit with the uh, classic uh, range of symptoms that come with that disease. And I went on the internet, always a fairly dangerous thing to do, but I did it. And I read these symptoms and it was just like, wow, this is what's wrong with me. This is. This, this is what's been happening to me all this time. Coming from this place where I have two children who I know are suffering with the same problems as me, it, it just felt so right. So I brought them to Dr. Comden and we talked about what was going on and what, what was going on with you, tell, tell them what was going Everything on. Everything, just like, I remember having headaches all the time coming off of school all the time, so I'd come into my head and I didn't even know that I had less energy. I just felt like it was normal and I just got tired. But then ever since I've been told that fibromyalgia does that and I have fibromyalgia, I'm just like, I had really low energy back then, so. I've had aches with these, not, these big nodules on the sides, a lot of them. Um, and then like neck and shoulder stuff. But my pelvic pain is okay. incredibly better. So eventually I wound up living in California and seeing uh, doctors at the Institute for Health and Healing and one of them kind of systematically went through all the things that were wrong with me and diagnosed me with 
all of the conditions associated with fibromyalgia and then eventually figured out that what my primary problem was was fibromyalgia and he suggested that I read the book by Dr. Sina Mond you know what your doctor may not tell you about fibromyalgia and um it was sort of a revelation to read the symptoms of all these other people and think my god this is exactly what's happening to me like this is what I've been through I can completely relate to what these people are saying and it actually seemed like a miracle to like even just read about people that were experiencing the same thing. So in examining thousands of fibromyalgia patients, Dr. St. Amand realized that we had a unique and specific pattern of muscle spasm and swellings, which he called nodules, throughout our bodies. And he taught me how to examine patients and feel these nodules. This is called mapping. And uh, when I examine a fibromyalgia patient, I start at the head and work all the way down. And I can actually feel where their muscles are tighter, where their muscles are in spasm, and where the swellings, the nodules are. And the nodules have the excess phosphate in them. And as my patients get better, as they continue to clear well on guaifenesin, I feel their muscle spasm decrease and their nodules fade away. So over time, mapping patients to tell what's going on with their muscle spasm and their nodules allows me to help them recover from their fibromyalgia symptoms. Okay, let me check you. Go ahead. Great. In first grade, you know, the teacher commented about his not being able to pay attention some days, fatigue, and this year he's been there's, she's talked a little bit, bit about that in the fall, but since then he's been fine. Oh, that, that's great. That's great. And and how about um, his mood, getting along with the other kids? Yep. I mean, the normal sibling issues, but he's, he's a good peacemaker, too. Mm. I guess more, more recently, I fell off the couch when I was cleaning blinds. It's like from that moment, it was... I just felt terrible. My mind, I was getting really depressed, so I needed to find out how to help myself. And my mom happened to be visiting, helping after Joseph was born, and she went to Barnes and Noble and brought home the What Your Doctor May Not Tell You About Fibromyalgia book and gave it to me. And as I read it, I mean, I think a lot of people say, even in the book, like I read it and it was my life story, and it sounds cliche, but that's what it felt like. You know, it reminded me of symptoms I'd had when I was young, and it pushed back my memory, forgotten about. Um, and it talks about how a lot of women will get worse after each baby, and that had been my experience. Um, you know, I'd, I'd kind of, I'd make a recovery, I'd feel a little bit better, but my baseline ended up worse than the previous time, each with each four kids. Um, yeah, I've, I went to GI doctors because all of a sudden I had all these GI symptoms, whereas previously, since I was about 20, I would get kind of IBS symptoms around my period. And at, at this point, after Joseph, they were constant. When I was reading the book, once in a while I would think, you know, Daniel, my husband has this symptom, and this symptom, and this symptom, and, and I'd always wondered why the kids had so many of these random symptoms, and I knew his aunt had been diagnosed with fibromyalgia about 20 years ago. And I thought, you know, could it be that we both have it? And, you know, we passed on all these genes to our kids. My youngest son here, Willem, um, was really struggling at school. It just didn't make sense because we knew it was all okay up here, you know. So we came out of that first appointment, it was like, definitely both kids definitely have this but better still that there was something we could do about it. Um, and so we talked about the guaifenesin protocol and uh, we talked to the kids about what that would involve and, and what a difference that would make for them. And you were pretty cool about it, weren't you? You weren't bothered? You weren't bothered about taking the tablets, were you? The difference is just huge. Both of my kids are doing excellently at school. Willem's progress at school has been enormous. He just, just took this huge leap and his teachers are amazed. We are 
I'm not amazed actually. We are just super, super pleased that he is now reaching his full potential. I was in a clear last year at the end of eighth grade, which was, I went to school every day. It was amazing. I felt great and I was motivated to go to school, which I was never motivated to go to school before. That was definitely something I never thought I would actually be able to feel, is wanting to go to school. He just, he was really happy, which if you're a parent of a child who's not happy most of their life, it's like really shocking to have a happy child. You know, there is no fix. There is no, it's a long thing, but if you really do it, if you really follow the protocol completely, then there's a huge reward. We've seen it. And when I met with Dr. St. Amand after being on the protocol for 18 months, he saw my improvement and he asked me if I would take over his medical practice in fibromyalgia when he retired. So I got busy. I went to his office and I trained with him and now I've been seeing fibromyalgia patients for almost five years and I love it. Dr. St. Amand has found that the kidneys in patients with fibromyalgia excrete phosphate very sluggishly. They don't do a very good job at it. And the wonderful thing about guaifenesin is it allows the kidney to excrete phosphate six times faster. And this increase in phosphate excretion is the key to what helps our fibromyalgia symptoms decrease and eventually disappear. You're your shoulders look very good. Um, they'll decrease in that size. Can we like quickly flip sure, sure. to the oh, original? Oh man. Here it there, is. Look at that. Look oh at that. my gosh. Look at that. Look at now that. that, that's like, big smile. Wow. I have never seen shoulders this involved. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at that. He, he told me I was in the top 10% of his worst cases. You, you were like a Dalmatian. <laughs> look at all the nodules and the spasm you had. Oh, I'm so proud of you. Our daughters started a Facebook page for fibromyalgia support that they didn't tell me that it was for me to manage. It was just suddenly like, here mom, we think that you should do this. So I did, and it was great, and it was fun, and we're just trying to kind of be that friend, that encourager, that support that says you can do this. Dr. St. Amon's whole theory, I mean, he even says there may be holes in his theory, but what works, works. All those symptoms that we all share, they'll go away. Away. Your muscles don't feel quite as tight. It's mm -mm. good. And it might be from the progesterone too. Good. Yeah, I really like that hormone. Yeah. <laughs> it's a oh good one. God. And um, things happen for me just the way people report in the book. Like my symptoms became very dramatically worse, and then got very dramatically better. I realized there was a dramatic change in the amount of energy I had, in the amount of pain that I was in. I felt like I was a teenager again. I was able to start doing more. And um, have the confidence that I could have a baby. <laughs> So two years after I started this treatment, I got pregnant with my son, and it seems like a miracle after waiting so long to have a child. So first of all, no new nodules. You've got some muscle spasm in your neck, which I think is from driving. Mm -hmm. And nursing. And nursing. Um, these nodules are gone. Yay! Smaller, smaller. 
it's so much better, definitely. That is so interesting. You know what's funny too about these ones? They're yes. they're smaller, but like now, like I can feel them. Yes. You know? Yeah. They're more they're discreet. Actually like, there's like grapes or something right. instead they're of more... like oh, there's a big patty of pain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so much better. You're really, really doing great. Uh, are there things that you find that you can do to help yourself feel better? If I remember what Sarah was like a year ago and realize that she's come so far in a year, I think that's helpful too to, to try and remember that. Definitely. Yeah, it's been actually been really nice to have Sarah go through the process a little bit before me. and. Uh, I know you recommended not doing it at the same time, and I can only imagine what life would have been like if we had tried that, so I'm glad that we at least staggered it a little bit to survive life during the clearing stage. It started, it started making sense if he has fibromyalgia, why the kids have all these symptoms already, and you know, he's more resistant to believing that there's anything really wrong with him, but I had him read a few chapters, and he couldn't deny that he'd had all these symptoms, and that his dad does, and um, his aunt who has been diagnosed. And so when he brought us all in, I remember just the butterfly fly feeling, like if if we don't have fibromyalgia, what is it? You know, back to square one. But as you mapped each of us, you know, yes, you have it. Yes, you have it. All, all five of us, um, not the baby yet, but just thinking, all right, now we know what it is. There's a treatment that totally made sense to me. Um, as a nurse and just as, you know, logically thinking through it, what Dr. Sinaman had found. And like that glimmer of hope that there's something that can be done and we might not always feel this bad. So after our appointments and our diagnosis, the kids and the three kids and I started on um, the Gwifenison protocol right away. And we're feeling, we started on the lowest dose. I didn't feel any different for a week. I noticed changes in my three-year-old daughter right away. Um, but for myself, once I s took the 600 milligrams, the next morning, I think old symptoms came back. I felt like I'd been hit by a truck. It was just, it was awful. It was a, a very significant worsening of symptoms. After the first four months or so, I was def you know, definitely noticing lots of improvements and better days. Like, um, I just sometimes I get a little dizzy and then I just like, I get dizzy and I just can't stop myself. Mm -hmm. And I like, I have to lay down and that helps and I get up like um, almost a minute later and I'm like, oh, I can't. And I feel like I'm gonna fall over. So wow. I have to go back and lay down. That's not good. Yeah. What, what's but that, that hasn't happened at all since oh, our since, since you saw me last? You know, is that there are lots of things happening to us now where we're really noting a, a huge difference in, in our lives and how the, the three of us are coping so much better now that we're on the treatment. So In the future, I hope I can become a some kind of professional sports player, like soccer, baseball, or swim or anything like that. Um, because now that I know I can do it. Me as a mum, I have so much more hope now. I, just seeing them, recently they um, tried out for an elite soccer team. You know, a year ago, that would have been like, nah. you know, obviously I've always encouraged them. <laughs> but, you know, it would have been really difficult for them. And I don't even know they would have got through the tryouts. You know, they, they had to go through two or three, two tryouts. You had to do two tryouts for each one. Like the tryouts and stuff, they were tiring and they did make my legs ache. But I wasn't in pain halfway through and I can commit to a lot more things now. Well, you've been through, you've got through to the elite team, haven't you? You've got through yeah. the tryouts and they're in the elite team now, which is so exciting for them and for us. And, um, you know, now academically at school, um, at the end of last year, I was told that Willem was below average, was below the, the, the standard that our school district required. Now he's above. So, I mean, this is a huge, huge leap. Um, so now I, I feel like I, my kids have a future that, that I didn't necessarily feel they had a year ago. It's annoying to take medicine every day, but, <laughs> but everything's a lot better now. Um, although I do know that it doesn't work for all fibromyalgia patients, I think it would be worth it to invest in those it has worked for and try to understand 
why it's actually working for some people. Um, especially given that so few other things have been demonstrated to actually help fibromyalgia patients. I don't know what the experience is for other people, but to look back and remember our life unable to walk up a hill, unable to go to high altitude, unable to socialize normally, unable to go dancing, you know, all of these normal activities that I can now do without any pain. It really feels like a miracle. I remember celebrating with my coworkers at the end of the day. And we all cried and hugged because we couldn't really believe it. And they had seen me go through this and seen me go through the early stages of the treatment. And it just transformed my life. He likes the shoulder too. Oh, Aww. yeah. Oh, um, it was about eight days after we started the medication and um, when we were doing devotions, putting her to bed, she was kind of being silly, laughing and jumping on the bed. And I realized that she hadn't done that for months and months, probably six to eight months. And you know, just realizing, oh, this is our first you know, good hour, like the book says for herself, good hours and then then good days. And I feel once in a while I feel like you know I could go back to school and and whereas before I thought I'd never I couldn't ever learn another thing again. So my mind as my mind clears, I have more hope that you know I'll be able to you know use my nursing again or you know, other talents or knowledge I'm gaining through this. But right now it feels good to have more energy just to take care of the kids and you know be a more involved wife. I would encourage anyone who figures out that they have it, you know, at a young age, to do the protocol to get cleared. If I could have, you know, known this and done this at 16 and been four years cleared by the time I got married when I was 20, I just can't imagine the differences in our marriage, in my life, in having kids. I mean, since I was about 20, I felt like I was 60, and by the time I was 30, I felt like I was 80. And yeah. To think of how my 20s would have been if I would have felt like I was in my 20s, it would. Have, I mean, I can't imagine the difference, and I, I wouldn't wish it on anybody. So yeah, I'd start it when you're young. Because I have fibromyalgia, and I've struggled with symptoms, and I've tried many different therapies, I think this enables me to be better aware of what my patients are going through. And my goal is to diagnose fibromyalgia patients as quickly as possible and get them on effective treatment so they have the best chance of getting their lives back. But from personal experience, I know how important it is to tell fibromyalgia patients that fibromyalgia is real, that their pain is real, but also there's hope for everyone with fibromyalgia to feel better. So thank you, Dr. St. Amand, from the bottom of my heart for giving me my life back and for teaching me how to help others with fibromyalgia get their lives back. Oh, 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 please don't hang a 
bulb above my table Cause I am made of all the same stuff That makes the seasons what they are I am made of dirt and stardust My daddy's dreams, my mother